In the academic circles, we know that elementary school students in the United States, well, they've fallen behind significantly, particularly in reading, and they also had the largest ever decline in math. Now, that is according to a national education assessment showing. And it basically showed that this devastating effect of COVID 19 with the pandemic on the kids in the country has very, very much impacted their educational levels. But we can't really blame it all on the pandemic. And really, when we look at the true causes of it, some things may shock you. But before we turn to the numbers, let's really talk about what this test looks like. So the National Assessment of Educational Progress, that's NAEP, also known as the nation's report card. Well, it tests thousands, hundreds of thousands of fourth and eighth graders across the nation. And this year was the first time since 2019 that the test had been given. And it's the first nationally representative study of the pandemic's impact on learning. And basically the results, they were staggering. So this, the nation's average math score for fourth graders fell by five points since 2019 from 241 to 236 out of a possible 500. Eighth graders national average math score dropped by eight points from 282 to 274 out of possible 500. Average reading scores for both grades fell less dramatically by three points. Scores in a group of large urban school districts fell by similar margins. Reading scores dropped to 1992 levels. Nearly four in 10 eighth graders failed to grasp basic math concepts. Not a single state saw a notable improvement in their average test scores with some simple or simply treading water at best. Now, what's more here is that the eighth graders who were tested between January and March, well, they've now moved on to high school. So they've been ushered through the system. And this is a huge dip in score, even though it sounds like it, it's just marginal. No, it's significant. And this is probably also a serious wake up call for the nation. Now, the commissioner for the National Center for Education Statistics, Peggy Carr, she offered this context to show you how grave this matter is. In NAEP, when we experience a one or two point decline, we're talking about it as a significant impact on a student's achievement. In math, we experience an eight point decline, historic for this assessment. Now researchers, they usually think of a 10 point gain or drop as an equivalent to roughly about a year of learning. And this makes the most recent score change even more shocking. So several major districts saw test scores fall by more than 10 points. Cleveland saw the largest drop, a single drop falling 16 points in fourth grade reading, along with a 15 point decline in fourth grade math. Baltimore and Tennessee's Shelby County also saw precipitous declines. There are children out there who do not have the basic understanding that they need for math and for reading, and yet they've been ushered along through the system. Does this give you pause and concern as much as it gives me concern, John? I cannot tell you how much I hate it. And obviously here we're talking about fourth and eighth graders, but you know we know that this is gonna influence how they do in the rest of their schooling and then off into their careers. But Clearly there's some concern about our math abilities too, because you'll notice in one of those first graphics you listed, they didn't just tell us what the final score was after losing five points, they had to actually do the subtraction for us, because they didn't have faith that we'd be able to do it. Now this is devastating, I mean losing a grade and a half of math when you're only in the fourth grade is so utterly unacceptable. And there are already a ton of issues that I can't understand why we aren't focusing on them every day. Like the fact that we can go from one you know, extreme weather event to another without talking about climate change, I've never understood that. But the fact that the country isn't grinding to a halt to deal with this, I find this to be inconceivable. I'm also a little bit worried about what would happen were we to do that, because I have a feeling that the right wing answer to this would have just been, no, we just shouldn't have shut down at all. We should have had a couple million people die. And that's their answer effectively, or I don't know, they, they're probably gonna find a way to blame teaching second graders CRT for these test scores. But for me, like there, to a large degree, the only thing that I wanna see is the average American getting smarter, because I feel like that is the only way we're gonna get to the future that I've imagined my whole life we might be able to get to. And to see us actually going backwards to lose literally decades of advancement is just incredibly depressing.
Absolutely, and the thing is, is it almost signs that the GOP is winning because we know they like to keep the populace very uninformed, uneducated, and just unable to be able to decipher the lies that they are spewing. And so having children not to have these core concrete elements of their knowledge that they should be able to take into their adulthood, it's going to have a significant impact, particularly also because we know that over the last few years, we've seen also a precipitous decline in the numbers of enrollments for college whether it's community colleges, four year universities, masters, everything is declining in terms of people educating themselves and informing themselves. And so if we end up with a society full of people who what seem like just Twitter comments, it's going to be hell for oh. everyone. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can tell we, you're just as bothered as I am. Look, it's obviously complex. It's and, and one important thing that, that you've already mentioned, but that I want to make sure that people really focus on coming out of this is that yes, things were bad during the pandemic, and it's not entirely just because of the pandemic, but yes, things have been especially bad. But test scores were bad before the pandemic. We already were failing our kids. We were in in effectively every way that you can, failing ourselves, failing our future. And it is a problem of closures, I guess. It's a problem of funding, but it's also a problem of a culture that has never actually given a damn about learning, about science, about expertise, about creativity and imagination and all of these things. Like we just as a culture have always been at least suspicious of education, of the prospect of learning something new, experiencing something new. Often we go way beyond that and we're, we're downright hostile, not just to the idea of it, but to the individuals. We hate academia, we hate teachers, now we even hate doctors as a culture. And so, you know, look, the, the kids, I'm sure that some of them want to learn, and some of them will be told that they need to learn at least a little bit to be able to get a job. That's often the only way that education is talked about is as a means to an end of some career, not as a means um, on on its own. But just like, why would they care about this when the only time they hear about schools from their parents is, you know, like by teachers trying to groom their kids or something? Like the entire well has been poisoned, and I don't know how we bounce back from this. No, and I, I don't. I think you are absolutely right. I don't think we really have the incentive, given our legacy, of not prioritizing education. And as we know, knowledge is power, and they do not want a populace that is powerful. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, how we got here to the extent that we know. So basically, believe it or not, the decline in scores, it's not necessarily a product of any kind of partisan politics. Really, this failure here is bipartisan, this per politico. Declines afflicted states and major cities, whether they were led by Republicans who pushed to quickly reopen schools amid the pandemic or Democrats who urged a more cautious return to normal classes. That tells us a lot in terms of what's going on in the approach here. And also, this isn't necessarily a product of the pandemic itself. Now, the declines, they're only partially attributable to this push to really shutter schools and move online where there were possible COVID-19 surges. Now, Commissioner Carr explained, there's nothing in this data that tells us that there is a measurable difference in the performance between states and districts based solely on how long schools were closed. And let's not forget that remote learning looks very differently all across the United States. The quality, all of the factors that were associated with implementing remote learning, it is extremely complex. The commissioner also said that more analysis is needed to understand the role that the pandemic played in the declines, along with other factors such as teacher shortages and also bullying. And Beverly Perdue, who is the chair of the National Assessment Governing Board, said this. This is not the result simply of a horrible three years for students. This is a result of a realized generational decline. If people get this data, look at it and think it's all because of the pandemic, then that could very well be a nearly fatal mistake for decision making. Absolutely. Now scores declined across the board, regardless of race, economics and other demographics. However, it's really important to note as we often see that when there is some kind of loss in society, it is felt hardest by the most marginalized of racial groups. So blacks and Hispanics, well the students, they, their scores suffer the most. This per US News.
Black and Hispanic students tended to incur steeper declines, particularly in fourth grade math, where they experienced a seven point drop compared to white students whose scores dropped by an average of three points. And while their declines weren't significantly different from white students and other graded subject combinations, they started from lower levels of academic achievement, meaning many more fell into the basic or below basic level of understanding than did their white peers. And lastly, with students from low income households and also students with disabilities, they also suffered considerably in part because they were kept out of school longer or also they didn't have the special needs accommodations and educators that they needed. We do know that urban school districts, which generally remained in remote uh, learning the longest due to a combination of factors, including community transmission and the increased vulnerability of their communities, posted some of the biggest declines in math scores, but showed less of a downward trajectory in reading scores. It just really shows you that across the board that there are problems. And this is also very indicative of something John had mentioned in terms of generational issues when it comes to the fact that the US hasn't really ever pushed hard for education and invested in the knowledge of its people. John? Yeah, 100%. And look, looking forward, you have to imagine, so the, the kids who are behind as fourth graders or behind by as eighth graders, they're still gonna have to proceed through school. They're gonna try to get into high schools, they're gonna try to get into colleges or whatever. And some people are going to be to have the resources to do private tutors and SAT prep classes, or they're gonna be able to fall back on legacy or connections or things like that. So like all of this is about the actual education, what people are really learning. But then there's also the other factors that will allow some to bounce back more easily than this. And while we focused, I think rightly so on the racial breakdown in this, there's also obviously a massive class distinction in there too. You know, remote learning looks very different when your family has a lot of resources than when and you know, both of your parents are working multiple jobs. And so this is just like the perfect case study of the intersection of all of the sources, the main like sources of inequality, all working together to potentially set back an entire generation. Absolutely. And the thing is, is as much as so much of this is unfortunate in terms of the truth and very negative, there are, there are some positive news out there. Education experts, well, they're saying that math scores are most responsive to teaching and classroom learning. So hopefully that's a way we can get those scores up by having educators in the class educate when it comes to math. But then when it comes to reading scores, that they're basically boosted in the home mm -hmm. outside of a school environment where hopefully family members and loved ones can help children with reading um, because I damn sure can't help them with math, that's not for me. <laughs> uh, but we also do know that the Secretary <laughs> of Education, Miguel Cardona, he's pushing big right now in terms of the work to ensure that schools know that they can leverage the um, $123 billion in funding that was part of the COVID relief package uh, that was passed in 2021, uh, this can go towards uh, tutoring, curriculum upgrades, and all sorts of things. And they're also going to be issuing some recommendations, curriculum, and guidance in the ways in which schools and educators can leverage this money. So there seems to be a lot of opportunities out there to hopefully uplift and get these scores up. But at the same time, again, a lot of these kids already been moved through the system. They're already in high school now, and they'll probably continue to be passed on even though they don't have the skills. Yeah. And then they won't even be able to necessarily be contributing members of society because they won't have the basic knowledge that they need in order to truly thrive. That Any thoughts, John? That, that is certainly the fear. Yep, doesn't seem like it's very good right now, but hopefully the United States will get it together 